developmentally delayed and should not be in prison. Not as much as people think. Not as much as people think. <clears throat> oh my God, friends. This rabbit hole is dark, deep, and stanky. What is going on here, guys? <laughs> I originally got involved in wanting to talk about the Gypsy Rose Blanchard case and Munchausen's by proxy because, you know, of my long history of working <laughs> with pediatric patients and having experienced needing to help with diagnosing. But little did I know that Katie Joy Paulson was already deep, deep down this rabbit hole with her slimy fingers and hands trying to wiggle their way deep into <laughs> Gypsy Rose Blanchard's pockets, looking for some change, some extra money, some power, some fame, you know, all the shit she's usually searching for. But it turns out there's others down this rabbit hole with us. And Katie Joy doesn't like that very much. Gypsy belongs to her. Approximately four years ago, two social media creators, Without a Crystal Ball and Fancy Maselli, became oddly obsessed and enmeshed with Gypsy Rose and her family. Fancy was actually in the lead when it came to winning Gypsy's support system over. Allegedly, she was speaking daily with the family. She considered herself extended family to Gypsy and tried to act as a kind of business contact for Gypsy. Enter Katie Joy Paulson. Allegedly, Katie Joy requested a meeting with Fancy and her team because she wanted to get involved on the Gypsy Rose Blanchard case. The meeting was videotaped in secret for a record. For some reason, directly after the meeting, Katie Joy contacted Gypsy Rose's family and spoke shit about Fancy. In retaliation, Fancy released the record of her meeting with Katie Joy. Katie Joy has been heavily criticized for what she said in this meeting. In the retaliation cycle from hell, Katie Joy researched and publicly shamed Fancy for her past criminal history, and we'll get into that later. And there was bad blood just leaking from the disgusting mouths of the vampires who all wanted a piece of this story while Gypsy languished in prison. Fast forward and condense all the drama. Suffice it to say, Fancy Maselli fell out with the Blanchard family and went on to speak out against them on her true crime Facebook page, which has over 50,000 subscribers. I've listened extensively to her podcasts, and she is extremely critical of Christy, Gypsy's stepmom. Fancy calls the Blanchard family a family of scammers and alleges that lies abound to this day surrounding this case. Meanwhile, Katie Joy's channel exploded as she focused on Josh Jugger and later the Sister Wives. She became rich and seemingly sat in her living room chair biding her time until Gypsy would emerge from prison again. After Gypsy was released from prison on December 28th, Fancy made this video. Hey guys, I'm Fancy and this is the Good Wives Network. Today I'm going to respond to a video that Gypsy Rose Blanchard's sister, Mia Blanchard, put out concerning me. I don't know why she chose to put this out at this time. It's kind of interesting to me. I haven't had contact with them in years. I don't even talk about them anymore. Um, I talk about the case, but I don't talk about the personal things that happen between me and them some of that will probably be in our documentary because it shares the case and what happened after the math of the the murder and all of that and how we all got here but other than that i i don't really discuss them anymore so i'm not sure why i'm being discussed but apparently i was discussed and she brought up some things that she took out of context now listen when i first met mia mia was a child 
maybe in freshman in high school. I don't even think she was that. I think she was in junior high when we met, when we met her. Um, but she doesn't know what actually happened. She only knows what she's been told by her sister or her mom or her dad or media. She doesn't know what actually went down between us. Okay, first and foremost, before I can even really let this content from Fancy sink in, I have to give an initial criticism that I have for Fancy. This whole entire post is screaming to me, a mesh meant. Why are you so meshed with this true crime family. What are you doing? This is inappropriate. So that's where I really come at this kind of a situation. And I don't want to criticize Vancy in the same way that I would criticize without a crystal ball because I, I have seen without a crystal ball participate in these awful behaviors time and time and time and time again. And I don't know that that's the case with Vancy. I don't know much about her outside of the Gypsy Rose Blanchard drama that, that I'm, you know, just going down the rabbit hole of here. But yeah, I see enmeshment and I think it's a real problem. So she has, you know, first she took some, some different types of, of text messages taken out of context to other people and, you know, talking about how I was so over Gypsy, I just wanted to be done and that if I really did dug deep enough, I could literally bury her. Well, okay, that's, that's the truth. With all the evidence that I've seen and all of what no one else has seen, I could literally spin this case on a top. And that's all we've ever wanted to do was tell the truth. That's all we've ever been been trying to do with this. We don't want to take a narrative. We don't want to give, you know, stupid opinions or opinions based off of half of the evidence. We always wanted the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle, which we got. And once we got that, that became a huge sticking point because we weren't going to tell the story they wanted us to tell so things started happening and I did make that statement and I was t not taking very kindly to the fact that I had been I had been threatened my life had been threatened by a murderer I didn't take that very kindly I didn't take very kind I didn't take it very well when they tried to destroy my marriage and I didn't take it very well when they set a stalker on me that I had to end up talking to the FBI about. So no, I did not have a good time back then and I was not happy back then and yeah, I said that. Absolutely. And I I don't have shame for it. Not after what they did to me, not after what they said about me. But all because, you know, I just wanted to tell the truth and they didn't like that cuz it makes them look pretty bad. Yeah, so pretty extreme accusations coming from Fancy towards Gypsy Rose and her support system. And I believe even though Fancy doesn't name without a crystal ball here, she's kind of talking about her as well and their past interactions with one another. But I did want to address a specific thing that she talked about, and that was a statement that I made stating that I was concerned that when Gypsy got out, based on the fact that she has been given, again, like I've said before in my other videos, zero mental health help while in prison for the last eight years, only been around criminals who are criminals, you know, and can teach her to be a better criminal, I expressed concern for Mia's life. And I still express concern for Mia's life. I like Mia. I think she's a sweet girl. Do I think that her parents are manipulating her? Yes. Do I think that her doing these TikToks is not okay? Yeah, I do. Because I think they're just exploiting her like they're going to exploit Gypsy when she gets out. But whatever, maybe she's doing them on her own. I don't know, I don't care. But I am concerned for her safety. And here's my reasoning. Gypsy lived a terror. Wow. So Fancy Maselli here in this video and also on her podcast is like making it clear. No bones about it. She is very concerned about Gypsy's family and what they are up to. For the rest of this video, she just says like she recognizes that Gypsy had a horrible life and that made her like into a person who may have a tendency towards, towards participating in behaviors that most of us 
find to be toxic, right? Um, or even criminal. So she kind of recognizes that, but she says, look, like I'm really worried about what's going to happen. And I know a lot of my own viewers, a lot of my own subscribers, you know, they have some of the same fears. Okay, so that's the end of what Fancy had to say. Along comes Katie Joy Paulson. Katie Joy, seemingly searching for an in with Gypsy Rose, began talking shit about Fancy all over her Instagram page, which has over 100,000 subscribers. Culminating in what happened last night, okay, here's where we get all caught up and things get even more crazy. So, here's the shocking drama from last night. Fancy Maselli was slated to appear on the Ashley Banfield show. That's a huge national network. She was going to talk about her research on the Gypsy Rose Blanchard case. Fancy says the camera crew was actually at her house getting ready to film her when the entire project was canceled. Allegedly, Katie Joy Paulson and Christy Blanchard contacted the network with concerns about Fancy, and then Katie Joy Paulson hopped on her 100,000 sub Instagram to expose yet again Fancy's real name and her entire criminal and financial history. This was all done before, four years ago, but here we go again. Okay, so this is what Katie wrote on her Instagram and Facebook page. For those of you talking smack about the Blanchards finally exposing, and then she gives Fancy's real name, her full name, this all happened last night because Fancy was set to be on News Nation 9 at 9 p.m. They want all media to know not to book interviews with Fancy, Fancy Maselli. It says Fancy almost got a primetime interview on a major cable news network. Okay, so she posts that, and then she goes on to say, Attention media and outlets that are covering Gypsy Blanchard, Blanchard's case. The family has become aware that Fancy Maselli is attempting to book interviews with major outlets as an expert and friend of Gypsy Blanchard. Connected to this post are screenshots of Fancy, a.k.a. Francesca, telling other bloggers that she wants to bury Gypsy. As recently as the past few weeks, Fancy has reached out to true crime creators on TikTok who immediately contacted the family over DMs Fancy sent them about the family. Fancy has not been connected to the Blanchard family family for over four years. She has no information about Gypsy's life today and knows nothing about her release or conditions. Additionally, she has been falsely reporting Gypsy already broke her parole conditions, which is categorically false. The family understands that Gypsy is a polarizing fig figure and not everyone likes her. They respect people's rights to have an opinion about Gypsy's case. However, given the harassment they say they've, they've experienced by this person, they do not want to be associated with her in any way. Gypsy is free for the first time in her life. She needs to be surrounded by people who are supportive of her growth and healing. Fancy consistently tells people that she evidence that will ruin Gypsy, or she she meant to say she has evidence that will ruin Gypsy and Christy Blanchard, but no such evidence exists. Following the distress the family is feeling, I am asking media to be mindful before booking interviews with this woman. Gypsy and the family do not want to have contact with Fancy. The family has told me that they will not interview any outlets that interview Fancy Maselli as part of this story or case. Thank you for your understanding. Gypsy needs support and understanding, not judgment and hate. But that's not it, because Without a Crystal Ball went on to dox Fancy further, leaving yet another post, which reads, Fancy Maselli is a con artist that poses as a blogger, writer, film producer, and true crime expert. She inserted herself into Gypsy Blanchard's life and promised her family that she would help them make a documentary about Gypsy's case. What the family did not know about Fancy at the time of her promises is that I'm not going to read it, but Katie Joy Paulson lists several charges and histories of bankruptcies. So she has charges for um, some kind of issue with welfare and being sued by a financial company, along with a couple of other things that Katie calls fraud, stemming from a case in 1998. 
Katie also writes, she has a history of scamming and posing as producers, directors, and writers despite no professional credits. But Fancy does have a podcast and she also has been featured on Apple TV for her Good Wives Network. Fancy has continued to run her scam against the Blanchard family. When Gypsy went up for parole, Fancy wrote a letter to the parole board requesting Gypsy remain incarcerated for the full 10 years. She has falsely claimed to be a friend of the Blanchard family and a family spokesperson since 2018. Fancy sells stories to outlets under her fake name, Fancy Maselli. Fancy has more criminal arrests and a longer criminal rap sheet than Gypsy Blanchard. She is obsessed with destroying and ruining Gypsy and Christy. She has harassed and slandered the family for years. They have begged her to leave them alone, and she refuses. Sharing these mugshots so the media gets a clear picture that she is not associated with the family. And here's what Fancy posted in response. Okay, these screenshots are from a post, The Good Wives Network on Facebook. And this is Fancy's Facebook page, which you can always go and check out. It has all of her true crime work on it. I'm going to go through this quickly and summarize a lot of it because it is extremely long. Here we go. So if you've been here a while, then this post is going to be old news for you. I am currently being harassed and slandered by internet personality Katie Joy of Without a Crystal Ball. She is trying to spread lies and tell news media not to speak to me because she is friends with the Blanchards. She met them because of an interview we did with her years and years ago, where she legit told us that her autistic son could easily be manipulated into murder and that autistic people can't live on their own, basically. Her only basis, he's autistic. By the way, my whole family is neurodivergent and we all take care of ourselves. She goes on about that. She went to Christy after approaching us because we wouldn't give her an exclusive interview. She then tried to flip the whole switch on us and we posted the entire recorded interview on YouTube. So let's discuss what she's claiming, shall we? Yes, this is my legal name. And she gives the name that Katie has been putting out there. Duh, my husband is all over my page and my friends from high school, so this is not news. And this is not the first time you tried to make this a big deal and it backfired, so let's try this again. So she's bringing up that Katie actually gave out all this information four years ago, and she's doing it again, acting like it's new. Fancy writes, yes, I have been arrested before. You want to know my big whopping crimes? One. When I was a young mother, I had a paperwork error in my welfare reporting, and I served a whole five days community service. Okay, she goes on to talk about that. Two, a school bus was sitting at the top of my street. I stopped, but the driver, who had issues with all of our neighborhood, said I didn't stop far enough away. And when I went to court, my public defender told me the DA was really on a kick with these school bus things. And if I fight, I could do three years. So instead, I pled and got a fine. That's a fine, not a felony. Number three, I had a girl who I allowed to stay with me, and when we were checking out at the self-checkout, it kept malfunctioning. And she goes on to talk about how when they left, they had like $50 worth of stuff they weren't, that hadn't been paid for, but she's claiming it was like a malfunction of the machine. And she says, again, that's not a felony. That's it, folks. Those are my crimes, but according to No Joy, my rap sheet is longer than Gypsy's. Well, it doesn't include murder lady, so I think I'm doing okay. The rest of her claims are financial issues I struggled with. If you want to judge me on that, well, people in glass houses just shouldn't throw stones. I'm sure everyone has struggled in their lives, and if you didn't, well, good. You didn't have to, lo- you didn't have to live through such rough times. I'm not even going to deign to acknowledge anything else she is alleging because it's all just lies. Tonight, I was supposed to be able to share my story on News Nation on the Banfield show. The film crew was even here when I got canceled. I can only imagine that this is from this camp of Gypsy, Katie, and Christy. Ask yourselves, what are they so afraid of? If everything I claim is a lie, well, they know my claims. Why don't they prove I'm wrong? Because I'm not, and I have the evidence to prove it. So why not debunk me for real instead of sending goons to attack me personally? Because you can't. I'm an open book, folks. I don't hide who I am or the mistakes I've made in my life. And any SS 
from personal conversations, well, yep, I said it, and that's that. I'm not debating a weirdo over private messages completely taken out of context. And I think this has to do with um, Gypsy's sister, Mia. It's so ridiculous. If any of this bothers you, again, I say nobody is forcing you to be here or listen, but you might just want to because, man, I have a lot to say. And that's pretty much the end of Fancy's post. Fancy has now gone back to her page and her YouTube channel to put out some more information about Katie Joy. And this cycle of retaliation continues. I cannot believe how insane these vampires all are. Katie Joy and Fancy are fighting over a family they should never have contacted and got involved in. Just my opinion. They could have done this story on their own with normal research from afar, but they decided not to because they wanted a quick and easy way to capture the attention of awful lot of people and make an awful lot of money quickly. And how does Gypsy Rose Blanchard feel about all of this? Well, all I can say is that Gypsy's been caught posting on Katie Joy's Instagram page here and there. And tonight, Katie Joy claims that she received an official early edition of Gypsy Blanchard's new book, which isn't going to be be released, which is not going to be released until January 9th. So now Katie has information that most people are not privy to. I would say that sounds like a payment for what Katie helped, for how Katie helped keep fancy off of national television when she was going to criticize Gypsy's family. Here's what Katie's had to say about Gypsy's new book. Trigger alert. Of course, Katie focused on the S.A. of it all. So I'm just going to summarize what Katie had to say about the book because it will also be posted on the screen for you. But basically, Katie says that the book exposes Gypsy's allegation that her grandfather S.A.'d both her and her mother and that her mother may have also been inappropriate with her by like taking showers with her as she grew older. Katie goes on to say she thinks the book is amazing. Of course. I mean, she's so focused. I'm not even going to go there. All right, you can read what's on screen from Without a Crystal Ball. I personally am going to wait until I get my version of the book to read it myself. But I am so taken aback. I'm disgusted, and I'm not sure where I'm going forward with my videos about this case. I know for sure I'm going to go ahead and review the book. But otherwise, I feel completely disgusted. I feel disgusted um, and overwhelmed by what Fancy Katie and people just surrounding Gypsy have been doing for a long time. I really need to take some time to, I don't know, like detox from just these few videos about these people. Okay. I really wanted to try to bring this to you in a way where you could understand what's been going on for like four years with these people and, and what this whole drama is all about. But I would love to know if you have any questions left please leave them in the comments below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps get my true crime stuff into the algorithm. I do want to move forward with more true crime on my channel, and I would love for it to be a case that Katie Joy Paulson is not incredibly a meshed in. Thank you so much for joining me here tonight. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow as we head down yet another rabbit hole.